All right, so I've spoken extensively about what Anthony Joshua needs to do in the Andy Ruiz rematch to give himself the best chance of victory. But in this video, I'm going to talk about what I think Andy Ruiz needs to do to give himself the best chance of victory in this rematch. Now, from a psychological point of view, I think it's very important that Andy Ruiz doesn't get overconfident and believe some of the things that are coming from a lot of people in the PBC uh, camp by way of AJ's chinny, AJ's mentally weak. All you got to do is go in there and hit him on the chin again. The fight's yours. You're going to beat him more easily this time than last time. Ruiz can't listen to all that. If he listens to all that, he runs the risk of ending up like Alida Alvarez in the Sergey Kovalev rematch. Because Alida Alvarez knocked Sergey Kovalev out first time around. He went into the rematch thinking, this guy's done mentally. I got to him last time. I'll do him even earlier this time. He went in there looking for the knockout, focusing on the knockout, believing that the knockout was inevitable, underestimating Sergey Kovalev's boxing ability. It backfired on Alida Alvarez in spectacular fashion. Andy Ruiz must not make this same mistake. Alvarez did not respect Kovalev's skills and he paid for it. Andy Ruiz must respect Anthony Joshua's skills. After the fight, worryingly for Andy Ruiz, he said, Anthony Joshua is not really a good boxer. For me, if I was in Ruiz's team, I'd be telling him, don't tell yourself that. The guy is 6'6". The guy has fought people like Klitschko, Povetkin, Parker, so on and so forth. If you go in there with a mentality that he's not a good boxer, he might shock you with his boxing ability. He has the height and reach over you. He has the foot speed over you. He's a more versatile fighter. He can do more things. Andy Ruiz can only go forward. He's not going to turn Sugar Ray Leonard and start boxing on the back foot. So from a mental point of view, I think it's a mistake for Andy Ruiz to go in there thinking, that's it, I just have to go in there, hit him on the chin again, and it's my fight. You know, the knockout is inevitable. He needs to go in there thinking this is a 12-round fight. Obviously, you're trying to break the guy down. You're trying to get to his chin when you can. But respect his skills. Understand it's a 12-round fight. Understand that second time around, AJ is probably going to concentrate on being more evasive and elusive. And therefore, you're going to have to make adjustments to compensate for the fact that he's moving more. So a lot of people have been saying that Ruiz has lost a ton of weight in training camp uh, for this AJ rematch. Ruiz actually says he's only about three pounds lighter. <laughs> I saw an interview and he said, yeah, I'm about three pounds lighter than I was, what was it, eight pounds? It wasn't a, a large amount anyway, lighter than he was. Now, for Andy Ruiz, a heavyweight who's 260 pounds plus, he can fluctuate, you know, five, six, seven pounds in a day, easy. So is he any lighter than he was against AJ? I guess we'll find out on the scales, right? Because that interview was several weeks ago. But still, the people running around saying that it's a mistake for Andy Ruiz to lose weight for this AJ fight, I tend to disagree. Now, it is true that if you lose too much weight too, too quickly, it can drain you and weaken you. And obviously, you know, Ruiz don't need that. He needs to be strong. But at the same time, if AJ is going to move more, Ruiz is going to have to quicken up those feet to be able to get to him. Because the last thing Ruiz needs to happen is for AJ to be really fleet-footed moving around. And Ruiz, who has quick hands but don't have quick feet, he's a plodder, for him to start having to reach with punches and start missing and giving AJ the opportunity to land. Because remember, AJ did put Ruiz on the ground in that first fight. Ruiz admitted in subsequent interviews that he was shocked when he got dropped. He'd never been dropped before as a pro. He's got a good chin. And he admitted that in the fourth round, he was a little hesitant and he was careful. And you go back and look at the fight, you would imagine that Ruiz would be ultra aggressive in the fourth round, right? He's just dropped AJ twice in the third. You'd imagine he'd be ultra aggressive in the fourth. He wasn't. That was actually Ruiz's most cautious round, that fourth round. And he said in interviews that he, he was uh, being very careful because this is a very big guy who hits extremely bleeping hard. So that knockdown had an effect psychologically on Ruiz in that fourth round. He was like, whoa, <laughs> that's never happened to me before. I need to be careful. 
okay? So you don't want to be in a situation where you're having to reach with punches because that's when you're going to get caught, yeah? So him coming in a little bit lighter, that's something I would like to see to give him a better chance of winning the fight. Also, Ruiz doesn't have the greatest head movement. Part of it is because he's so big, he can't move his waist um, as much. You know, he can't bend at the waist as much as other fighters who don't have all this uh, fat around their midsection. But, you know, where he can, he needs to improve his blocking of punches if he's not going to be able to move his head. Now, up close, Ruiz is quite good at moving his head when you're exchanging hooks. We saw that in that infamous third round exchange he had with AJ where he dropped him. But at long range, Ruiz's head movement is not very good. He does tend to get caught coming in quite a bit and picked off at long range quite a bit. AJ in the first couple rounds hit Ruiz with some very clean jabs that he walked Ruiz onto, some lead left hooks, very, very clean lead left hooks. And there was at the start of one of the rounds, I think it was the start of the third or the second, he walked Ruiz onto a left and a right, real clean shots, which Ruiz took fantastically well. But again, why are you getting caught so clean so early in the fight at long range? Ruiz needs to do a better job of tightening his guard and making sure he's not getting caught so clean as he comes in. You know, maybe faint a little bit before you're going to throw your shots as, as you come in. I know he's a, a counter puncher rather than uh, a volume puncher as a pressure fighter, but still, you know, try and be a little bit cuter and a little more sophisticated to avoid getting hit with them long range shots. Because again, you know, AJ's a big man. He managed to drop Ruiz first time around. Ruiz don't want to repeat of that. Yeah, even though he's tough, I mean, let's say something similar to the first fight happens where AJ drops him, but this time AJ don't go rushing in and he, you know, stays behind his jab. Then a then Ruiz is going to be playing catch up. He don't want to be in a situation like that. Okay, so be a bit more defensively responsible. You know, cover yourself up, particularly at long range and don't get caught as cleanly as you're getting caught in the first fight, uh, especially not early on. Now, Obviously, he needs to keep AJ under pressure. Again, this is why if AJ is going to move, it's good for Ruiz to be a bit lighter. Obviously, he needs to go to the body. If you can't get to the body with hooks, jabs to the body are good. Ruiz has a good boxing brain. He knows when he's in position to throw jabs to the body. Another factor is the psychology of AJ. He needs to play on AJ's psychology. Yeah? He needs to do something which he's actually very good at which is exploding out of clinches. Ruiz, in many fights that I've seen of his in the past, has got a way of kind of lulling opponents into a full sense of security when they're in a clinch. Then he'll explode with a volley of real fast punches, literally at point blank range, where the opponent thinks they're safe. Because Ruiz will relax his body and he'll make you think that we're not going to exchange up close. But then he just explodes with all these fast punches. He needs to try and get AJ with that. Yeah? Up close. Particularly if AJ's moving around, when they do get in a clinch, make it, see, make, you know, trick AJ into thinking that you're tired or that you're, you know, relaxed. You're not going to throw anything up close and then explode on him. He needs to use that trick in this fight. Also, if AJ's moving around, Ruiz needs to do what he did in, I think it was the fourth or the fifth in the first fight and say, what are you running for? You know, play the whole macho game because AJ does have a macho streak in him. So you, you, you're going to need to, you know, get, poke that macho streak of AJ and try and provoke him into going for you. Yeah, and then look, I, I don't advocate fighters doing dirty things, but, you know, maybe a, a punch on the belt line or something here and there to enrage AJ if I was in Ruiz's corner, I might advise, advise something like that if he's falling behind on the cards. Something to provoke AJ into getting aggressive. Yeah? Whether you got to gold him, you know, stand in the middle, right? Come on, stop running away, let's fight. And also, him doing that could have a psychological effect on the crowd. Because remember, this is not, I know there's going to be a lot of Brits there, but there's going to be a lot of Arabs there and other people too. They might not like AJ's tactics. They might start booing AJ if he's being overly negative. Ruiz needs to play to that. Yeah? And that might have an, an effect on the judges, particularly in tight rounds. But Ruiz is the one trying to come forward and make the fight of it, and AJ is just running away, you know, jabbing. It's not a very good visual, particularly in tight rounds. That might help Andy Ruiz on the scorecards. So, as I say, look, Andy Ruiz, 
doesn't have that many options, limited options in terms of the way he approaches this fight, but he just needs to tighten up what he did first time around in preparation for the possibility that AJ has made adjustments and he's going to be better in the rematch. Yeah, so tighten up what you did, particularly the defense at long range. Um, more, you know, gold AJ into it, into exchanging with you. Go to the body whenever you can. And I don't need to, to say anything about his front foot counter punching because it's excellent. When he, when he gets in position, you know, flurry like he did last time out and Hopefully for him, you know, if you're, if you're looking at it from a reason's perspective, he has the same success. So yeah, that's my take on it. That's what I think Andy Ruiz should do. Don't get caught out like Alida Alvarez did in the Sergey Kovalev rematch. <laughs> Don't be complacent and underestimate the guy's boxing ability. If you go in there and you, you're expecting him to have great boxing skills and it turns out his skills are not that good, then great because you, you are, hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst, right? Mentally, you're, you're supposed to gear yourself up for the toughest possible challenge. That way, if it turns out to be easier than, than you expected, it's a bonus. What you don't want to do is not be prepared for a tough challenge. Let the people get in your ear and tell you, ah, oh, it's easy, you'll knock him out this time. Because that's how you end up like a leader Alvarez in the rematch with Kovalev. And you don't want that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What do you think Andy Ruiz should do in the rematch of AJ to give himself the best chance of victory? Yeah, just drop it all in the comments. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.